Hey, man. My friend Ross sent me a uh, Rory Gallagher video that was really cool. Um, and I was telling him that when I feel like some blues, when I see live music or hear something that's got a good kind of solid beat, I feel it kind of like a, I physically feel that like one and two and three. It kind of hits me right in the chest, the one and two and three and four. And you have to kind of, in my opinion, you have to kind of internalize that feeling from music. And when you play, you should push that feeling out. So here's just a rough, this is not the song, but it's just something that inspired me from hearing uh, that Rory Gallagher song. So I really feel that boom, 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 bom, 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 bom. <laughs> I know that may seem ridiculous, but if you can't feel it, how can you play it? You have to get into that kind of internal rhythm or sensation. And when you're playing with a, with a drummer, you, you have to kind of link into what the kick and snare is doing, especially the kick, that boom feel it down here. So uh, I, I kind of just went off on a tangent there, but I was, I was playing 12 bar blues. I started with like a, which is pretty simple, you know. It's a real square kind of lick. Uh, that's like 10, 10, 12, 12. 10, 10, 12, 12. Very square. 10, 10, 12, 12. D, 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 C, C, A, A. So if you're interested in, in just playing some blues, that riff right there is really, man, a massively powerful foundation, that square riff. Again, that's D, D, 10th fret, 6th string, D, D, 12th fret, 4th string, C, C, 10th fret, 4th string, and A, A, 12th fret, 5th string. Did I say that right? 10, 12, 10, 12. Then you put in those little variations like a Let's put a little metronome on for that, just for a little fun, like Ah. <laughs> 65. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and four and
and two and three and four. Cool. And I was doing chord tone soloing where I'm targeting like the root third and fifth of each chord. If you don't know what that is, uh, just ask and I'll uh, do some explaining. But every chord, you know, is we assume is going to be a triad, a root third and fifth. And uh, so we need to, if you don't know what that is, we can define it, but it's just the first note of the scale, third note of the scale, and the fifth note of the scale. That's your one, three, and five. Those three notes are going to build your chord. So I'm aware of those notes, and as the progression is going, I'm planning ahead somehow to land on those notes so you can hear the chord progression in my solo. So I'm not just kind of working through a scale, I'm thinking of the chords. And so that's a huge part of the way I play, um, knowing the notes of each chord, which is not that difficult. Uh, you know, a C chord is C, E, G, a D chord is D, F sharp, A, an E chord is E, G sharp, B, F chord is F, A, C, B chord is B, D sharp, and F sharp. Um, those are the notes I'm hitting. You know, this chord progression I was thinking was D, G, and A. G is uh, G, B, and D. So I know those notes on my neck. I know what a triad is. I am familiar with the uh, notes of the chord, but I'm also doing it by shape and sound. So it's a combination of knowing my notes, knowing my chords, knowing where the notes are on the neck, plus knowing some shapes. So if I did it in another key, like let's say I'm not that familiar familiar with uh, A flat, I'll just do it like I wasn't really thinking about the note names, I was thinking more of the shapes. But I was covering three chords there, which you may have heard, you may recognize or may not. Uh, sometimes people don't hear it when I, I say, hey, I'm playing through a chord progression here. Soloing, can you hear it? And they're like, no, I, I really don't. Well, that's okay, but yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, so. If you're interested in the chord tone soloing, there's a book I really like. It's called Chord Tone Soloing by Barrett Tagliorino. Maybe I'll uh, remember to leave a link down in the uh, description. That would be an excellent book to read and study. It really changed a lot of things about the way I play, or I should say reinforced things I, I was aware of and probably doing, just made me more conscious of things that I had picked up by ear. Uh, but I didn't really have a term for it. I, I just knew that certain notes are gonna fit within the chord progression. So chord progressions are really important. Uh, you know, I was playing D, G, and A, or A7. And you could say, oh man, come on, man, those chords are boring, what are you talking about? Like, okay, you obviously don't know the potential of those chords and what you can do with three Real simple chords. There's a lot. Uh, so sometimes keeping it simple and not having 16 chords in your song is pretty powerful. All right. So this, this video is a little bit all over the map, but if these are some important things that I use to, uh, you know, if I'm writing or recording or performing or jamming or just having fun playing or teaching, I use all these ideas. And uh, it gets me through the day, and it's fun, and it works. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you understand, let me know. Uh, if you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know. And that's cool, we'll talk about it. All right, keep working. Very cool.